Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Escaping the Freedom YouTube channel. Today, I've got a really cool article for you, and it's, well, at least it's an article and a video that I really enjoyed creating, and it's whether you can become a millionaire, or, you know, at least wealthy, with just $5 a day, which, you know, it's not a lot of money. So, why did I make this video? Well, it was because, you know, speaking to friends and people that I know recently, I figured out that kind of the most common questions that, that, that I get asked uh, or like, you know, not questions, more like statements that I get asked are, are three different statements, right? The first one is, you know, it's too complicated. Investing's too complicated. I'm not that intelligent, you know, so I'm just not going to even start, okay? That, that's obviously absolute rubbish, okay? But fair enough, I understand where that's coming from. The second one is I don't have time to invest, you know? I, I don't want to come back from work and then just have to balance the portfolio and even learn to invest, right? Now, the third, the third excuse that people keep giving me all the time is I don't have money, right? I don't have too much money. I can't save that much money. You know, I can't save $500 or $1,000 a month. So why even bother investing, right? So that's why I've created this article because that's going to squash that third excuse just to the root, right? Just once and for all. The thing about statements like that is that they're just excuses, okay? That they're excuses that people give themselves to justify their behavior and to justify not even getting started with investing because people chase comfort, you know? Getting out of their comfort zone, it's not nice. It doesn't feel nice. So, you know, getting into something as scary as investing, you know, just staying away from that feels comfortable. That's why they don't do it. And, you know, I get it, you know, I, as you guys probably know, I had a big paradigm shift in my life. You know, I went from being an engineer to being an entrepreneur and started studying investing, right? That was a massive shift. Um, I got out of my comfort zone. I decided to just stop giving excuses to myself, stop trying to justify not doing things, okay? And I'm much better for that. Much, 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 much better for that. Just one last thing about excuses, okay, before I kind of carry on with, this, with the examples. And these excuses are often based on the wrong beliefs and those wrong beliefs are caused by misinformation, you know, the wrong information, the wrong data, right? And if you think about it, it's a bit like trying to learn how to drive, you know, and this example, well, this metaphor works a lot better if you drive a manual car, okay? So if you've got, you drive an automatic car, driving was probably not, not as hard for you, but for, you know, us uh, gear stick drivers, this is kind of how it goes, right? You have your first lesson, you know, you get in your car, and you know you put your seatbelt on, you see the steering wheel, you see the, see the gear stick, all the mirrors, all the different buttons, right? And it feels completely overwhelming. You know, I remember when I was like 22 years old, right? When I started learning how to drive, and the first few lessons, I thought, there's no way I'm ever gonna be able to learn how to drive, you know? And I just kind of went home, I, I locked myself in my room, and I was like, no way, mate, no, no way, I'm I'm gonna ever learn how to drive. But then I thought, hang on, hang on a minute. Pretty much everyone that I know knows how to drive. So that kind of tells me I should be able to learn how to drive eventually, right? Eventually with, with enough practice, you know, and the right mentality especially, I should be able to learn how to drive. So with enough time, I, I built up the courage to kind of just, just tell myself, no, don't, don't give excuses, okay? I will do it. It seems hard now, but I'll just keep going at it, okay? And eventually I succeeded. You know, big surprise. Now I can, I can drive just like pretty much everyone else in the world. So why have I given you this example? Well, it's because investing is very similar to learning to drive. You know, it is also very confusing, very intimidating, but you get started, you, you stop like believing the wrong information, you look at actual data yourself and you just get started. And then when you, once you get started, you realize, hey, this is first of all, not that bad, not that difficult but B, it's very profitable, <laughs> all right? So let's get straight into this example, okay? Can you become a millionaire, you know, if you invest just $5 a day, right? How much is $5 really? You know, you can probably buy a drink if you go out with your friends or some, you know, a couple of things from the supermarket, right? It's not a lot of money. I'm pretty sure that if you're watching this, you don't consider $5 to be a lot of money. And if you do, then you have to increase your income, okay? Because $5 for most people is not that much money, which means that you should be able to save $5 every single day, 
you know? And if you add it all up, that's about $150 every single month which again, depending on your income, might seem like a lot of money or it might seem like peanuts, okay? But in my opinion, $5 a day is not a lot of money. So it seems pretty ridiculous to think that with just $5 a day, you'd be able to have a million dollars, right? Well, that's where you're wrong. Because if you get those $5 a day or those you know, $150 a month, there's something you have to do with them, okay? You can't just stuff them under your mattress and not do anything with them because you're not gonna be anywhere near that, okay? What you have to do with those, those $5 a day is you have to put them to work, you know? Just like you go to work, you have to get every single one of those, those notes and put it to work as well. Now, how do you put them to work? Well, you invest, right? You invest in stocks. Now, in my opinion, dividend growth stocks are the best kinds of stocks. Now, dividend growth stocks are not companies that are very exciting, okay? You know, most people will say, yeah, yeah, I invest in, in Facebook or Amazon or Google, right? Or Tesla, right? Those are exciting companies. The kinds of companies you want should not be exciting, okay? In fact, they should be boring, okay? Now, hear me out. When you buy a company that might appear boring, it's for a reason, okay? First of all, it's probably something that people use all the time, right? Like energy. Or, or raw materials, or, or insurance, or food, industrial equipment, right? Things like that, that they're not very exciting, but people use them every single day. You know, the car you drive, the, the computer or phone that you're watching this on has been made thanks to those companies. So those are companies that are very likely to stay at the top of the market for decades to come, right? Because they're essential to, to our world, right? That's, that's the companies that you wanna buy stocks in, okay? And you know, there are things like, Target or, or Procter & Gamble or Coca-Cola, right? Things that are very basic, that people love, and they'll continue to love them for many, many decades to come, probably for the rest of your life, let's be honest. Well, guess what happens when those great companies are good at what they do? Well, they just make profits. They make money, right? The point of a business is to make money, and these companies are great at that. They're great at making money, and guess what? When they make money, if you're a shareholder, you're gonna make money, and now you're gonna make money by the increase in, sh in share prices, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna increase if the, the company makes more profits. And secondly, you're gonna earn in terms of dividends. You know, dividends are just cash that gets deposited to your brokerage account, you know, just like a bank account. And it's just basically free money. It's just like the company saying, hey, you know, hey investor, we appreciate you, you know. We know our stock prices might go up and down even though in the long run they'll go up. But we wanna thank you with this bit of money. Here's, here's this dividend. And, I one day want to become financially independent and purely live off dividends. So dividends will cover every single expense that I've got in my life, which is pretty cool, right? It's pretty, pretty cool. So let's get started with the example, okay? Let, let's see the maths behind this. Let's say that from the age of 25 to the age of 65, right? Roughly retirement age, so that's 40 years or pretty much most people's working careers. Let's say that for every single one of those days, you save $5 every single day. And what do you do with those $5? Well, you invest it in dividend growth stocks. So you eventually build up this really well-balanced portfolio of, of you know, different companies, different sectors, you know, really well diversified. And, and let's just assume that that portfolio provides you with around 10% every year, right? It grows by 10% every year. So it, that includes dividends, that includes uh, you know, stock increases, okay? Well, after all those 40 years, you know, by the age of 65, guess how much you'd have, right? Think, think about it in your mind. You're probably thinking a million, right? Because that's the title of this, of, of this video. Well, it's a, bit, it's a bit less than that. It's actually $969,000, at least using, using my calculations, okay? So that's not quite a million, but it's pretty close, okay? That, and this is just a calculation. But what I find really interesting about this is not how much money you've got in the end, it's how much money you actually save. Because $5 every single day for 40 years, you know, just the part you saved, comes up to $73,000. Now, that's so far away from a million dollars that it's even funny, right? So where did the other $900,000 come from? Well, it wasn't magic. Although, actually, yes, it was magic, pretty much, because it's the power of compound interest. I think it's extremely powerful. You know, I wrote an article about this on my website, escapingtofreedom.com. Um, and basically, Einstein called it the eighth wonder of the world. You know, he who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it, okay? That's 
what you need to, to capitalize on, compound interest. And that's the thing, compound interest exists because the companies that you've bought keep getting better at making money. You know, they, they open new stores, they hire the best people or even more people. You know, they, they create better deals with their suppliers and somehow they get better and better and better at making more money every year. You know, that's why you make more, more money every year. That's the beauty of investing. You're investing in great companies, they make money and you make money because they make money. Does that make sense? And don't take my word for it, okay? Let, let's give you an example. Procter & Gamble, you know, very well-recognized company, one of my favorite dividend growth stocks, and it's for a good reason. On their official website, you know, pretty much every, every single one of these companies has an investor's website, okay? And in most of those companies, you can just go in there and say, you know, if I bought this stock on this date and I held it till now, how much money would I have made? Well, in the case of Procter & Gamble, if let's just say you invested $10,000 back in 1980, right? That's just $10,000. Today, or at least when I record this video, those $10,000 would be worth $457,000. That's like a 4,500% 4, increase, okay, in those years. So that's pretty spectacular, okay? Now, bear in mind, I've cherry-picked Procter & Gamble because it's that good, but if you look at pretty much any company that pays a dividend and has been doing it for a while, you can expect pretty similar results or just extremely good increases in stock price, extremely good increases in dividends. But let's pause for a second. You might be watching this video and thinking, I don't believe this. I don't believe that these results are realistic. I don't believe that you can actually make a million saving $5 a month, right? It's a very simplistic view. And you're right. I, I also think it's simplistic. And this example gets used a lot. And I think the main point of it is that it lets you see what you can actually achieve. That with very little money, you can achieve amazing results. So that's why I wanna create a much more realistic example. Because the first calculation excludes some very, very important things, right? Inflation, it doesn't count inflation. It doesn't count taxes, right? Taxes are super important. So let's make a more accurate calculation, okay? What you're seeing now is an Excel spreadsheet that I've made myself, and it kinda just, it's meant to be able to predict what would happen to your money if you bought you know, these great companies that pay dividends and increase dividends, et cetera, right? Now, to get to the final result, you know, the more accurate result, um, I've included obviously taxes, I've included inflation, and you know, I've also included times when you can save more than just $5 a month, right? Because let's be realistic, people get promoted. You know, people get better at making more money. You know, I bet that 10 years ago, you were earning less than you are now, right? At least I hope so, right? Because, you know, that, that's just what happens. So you might only be able to start saving $5 a day, or maybe even less than that. But realistically, over time, you'll be, you know, one day you'll be like, hey, I can save $10 or 15 or 20 or 50 a day, right? If you do really well. So that's another factor that I've considered into this new calculation. Here's the other assumptions that I've taken, okay? I've, I've taken an inflation rate of 3%, which is kind of in line with what American inflation has done over time. I've assumed a starting dividend yield of 4%, and that is gonna grow, right? The, the dividend is gonna grow at 8% a year, right? These are the assumptions. Also, a yield increase in stock price, purely the stock price of, as well, 8%. And finally, I've assumed that you will reinvest every single dividend that you earn during those 40 years. I've also assumed a tax rate of 20%. So you, the dividends that you earn are taxed at 20%. So you only earn 80% of that dividend. And that's, it's like that in Spain, it's like that pretty much in every country in the world, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's that. Um, and I've also assumed that you can increase how much you save by just 5% a year, okay? So it starts at five, and it increases at 5% every single year, which is not a lot. So I think this is a much, much more realistic picture of you know, what would happen realistically rather than the other, the other um, example that I gave you, right? So with this in mind, when I put this through my calculator, this is what comes up, right? You would have a portfolio worth $1,070,000. And not only that, but that portfolio will be churning out every single year $32,000, right? That's pretty much like having a person live with you and earning you a salary without you having to feed them, without you having to, to shelter them, 
talk to them, right? That's the magic of dividend growth investing. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes, guys. $5 a day. You might only be able to save three a day or 10 a day, right? Get started. It doesn't matter if you don't have any money. It doesn't matter if you start from the bottom because, man, over time, you'll do really, really well. It's all about putting yourself in a position in which you can get wealthy. You know, you can really capitalize on, on what the broad market and, and pretty much the entire world is doing, right? People make a lot of money by investing and I've made a lot of money by investing and I think you should do as well. Just get started, honestly. That's the best piece of advice that I can give you. And the truth is, this is a much less risky way of making money than pretty much every other strategy that I've ever come across, okay? This is, you're investing in great established companies that they're not gonna fluctuate as much as, as something like Tesla, right? Or something like Facebook, right? It's just all up, up and down. These companies are established, they're boring companies, they do what they do really, 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 really well. They'll continue to do it for infinity probably. And you know, that's what you have to do. Just save a bit of money, invest in those companies. That's gonna lower your risk big time. And in 40 years, you will be a millionaire. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that next time you or someone that you know says, hey, I don't have a lot of money to invest. I hope you can tell them, hey, check out this video by Escaping to Freedom or just get out the calculator and do the math yourself. It's, it's pretty simple. So that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching it. If you could just do me a small favor, just please subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Click a like so that, you know, the YouTube algorithm says, hey, this video is useful. Let's show it to more people, you know? And that's my goal, guys. I want to help as many people as possible to just get wealthy and understand money better, okay? So until next time, um, next week I should be releasing a video. So yeah, guys, have a great day. Bye. <laughs>